Top 25 Cloud Engineer Interview Questions and Answers In today's technology-driven world, cloud engineering plays a crucial role in shaping how businesses operate. This video presents the top 25 interview questions and answers that aspiring cloud engineers should know to excel in their job interviews. From essential concepts to practical scenarios, these questions will help candidates prepare effectively. By reviewing this content, viewers will gain insights and confidence to tackle cloud engineering interviews successfully. 1. What is cloud computing and what are its main benefits? Cloud computing refers to the delivery of computing services over the internet, allowing users to access and store data remotely instead of on local servers or personal computers. Its main benefits include scalability, enabling businesses to easily adjust resources based on demand, cost efficiency, as it reduces the need for physical infrastructure, and flexibility, allowing users to access services from anywhere and on any device. Additionally, cloud computing improves collaboration by providing shared access to applications and data, enhancing productivity across teams. 2. Explain the differences between IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. Infrastructure as a Service, IaaS, provides virtualized computing resources over the internet, allowing users to rent servers, storage, and networking without managing physical hardware. Platform as a Service, PaaS, offers a platform allowing developers to build, deploy, and manage applications without worrying about underlying infrastructure. Software as a Service, SaaS, delivers software applications over the internet, eliminating the need for installation and maintenance. Each model serves different needs. IaaS offers flexibility, PaaS enhances productivity, and SaaS simplifies software access. 3. What are the main types of cloud deployment models? Cloud deployment models include public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, and community cloud. Public cloud. Services are offered over the public internet and shared among multiple organizations. It is cost-effective and scalable. Private cloud. Exclusively used by one organization, providing enhanced security and control over data and resources. Hybrid cloud. Combines public and private clouds, allowing for data and application portability. This model provides flexibility and optimized resource utilization. Community cloud. Shared by several organizations with similar requirements, offering a balance between cost savings and security. 4. How would you describe the concept of virtualization in cloud computing? Virtualization in cloud computing refers to the creation of a virtual version of computing resources, such as servers, storage, networks, or operating systems. This technology allows multiple virtual machines, VMS, to run on a single physical machine, optimizing resource utilization. It enables dynamic allocation and scaling of resources based on demand. Virtualization facilitates isolation between applications, enhancing security and stability. It is a core component of cloud infrastructure, supporting various services such as IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS by providing flexibility and efficiency in resource management. 5. What is a virtual private cloud, VPC, and why is it important? A virtual private cloud, VPC, is a secure, isolated section of a public cloud where organizations can provision a logically defined network that is dedicated to their resources. VPCs allow users to customize their network settings, including IP address ranges, subnets, root tables, and network gateways. This isolation provides enhanced security and control, enabling organizations to run applications in a secure environment while still leveraging the scalability and cost-effectiveness of public cloud infrastructure. VPCs are crucial for managing sensitive data, ensuring compliance, and facilitating hybrid cloud strategies. 6. Explain how load balancers work in cloud environments. Load balancers distribute incoming traffic across multiple servers, ensuring no single server becomes overwhelmed. They monitor the health of each server, routing requests only to those that are operational. Load balancers operate at different layers of the OSI model, with Layer 4 handling network connections and Layer 7 managing application-level requests. They can also provide features like SSL termination, session persistence, and automatic scaling. By efficiently managing traffic, load balancers enhance application performance, improve reliability, and ensure high availability in cloud environments. 7. What are the key components of AWS? Amazon Web Services, AWS, consists of several key components. The foundational element is Elastic Compute Cloud, EC2, which provides scalable computing capacity. Simple Storage Service, S3, offers secure, scalable storage for data. AWS Lambda allows running code in response to events without provisioning servers. Amazon RDS manages relational databases, while Amazon VPC enables users to create isolated networks. Identity and Access Management, IAM, ensures secure access control. Finally, CloudFront serves as a content delivery network, optimizing the delivery of data globally. These components work together to provide a robust cloud infrastructure. 8. How do you ensure high availability in cloud architecture? 
Ensuring high availability in cloud architecture involves several strategies. First, deploying applications across multiple availability zones or regions helps mitigate the risk of outages. Load balancers distribute traffic efficiently, preventing single points of failure. Implementing auto-scaling allows resources to adjust dynamically based on demand, ensuring performance during peak times. Regularly backing up data and setting up failover mechanisms are crucial for disaster recovery. Monitoring systems should be in place to detect issues early, enabling proactive response and maintaining service continuity. 9. What is disaster recovery in cloud computing and how would you implement it? Disaster recovery in cloud computing refers to strategies and processes that ensure the restoration of IT systems following a catastrophic event. Implementing a disaster recovery plan typically involves several key steps. First, identify critical data and applications that require protection. Then, select a suitable recovery solution, such as backup in a different geographic region or using cloud recovery services. Next, regularly test the recovery process to ensure reliability and efficiency. Finally, document the plan clearly and train staff to follow procedures during an actual disaster, ensuring quick restoration and minimal downtime. 10. Describe the concept of auto-scaling in cloud environments. Auto-scaling refers to the ability of a cloud computing environment to automatically adjust the amount of computational resources based on the current demand. This process enables applications to scale up or down dynamically, ensuring optimal performance while controlling costs. When traffic increases, auto-scaling provisions additional instances to handle the load. Conversely, when demand decreases, it reduces the number of active instances. This capability enhances resource utilization and maintains application availability, enabling businesses to adapt quickly to changing user demands without manual intervention. 11. What are the main differences between cloud architecture and standard on-premises architecture? Cloud architecture typically involves distributed resources, dynamic scalability, and managed services, while standard on-premises architecture relies on fixed physical infrastructure. In cloud environments, services are accessed over the internet, allowing for flexibility and cost efficiency. On-premises systems require upfront investments in hardware and maintenance. Security and compliance can differ as cloud providers implement shared responsibility models, whereas on-premises solutions often place the full burden on the organization. Additionally, cloud architecture supports rapid deployment and updates, enhancing agility compared to traditional setups. 12. How do you approach security in cloud computing? Security in cloud computing involves multiple layers of protection across the cloud infrastructure. It begins with understanding shared responsibility models between the cloud provider and the customer. Implementing strong identity and access management IAM, policies is crucial, ensuring only authorized users have access to sensitive data. Data encryption at rest and in transit protects information from unauthorized access. Regular security assessments, vulnerability scanning, and compliance checks help identify and mitigate risks. Adopting a proactive incident response plan ensures preparedness for potential security breaches. Regular training for staff on security best practices also plays a vital role. 13. What is edge computing and how does it relate to cloud computing? Edge computing refers to processing data closer to the source of data generation rather than relying solely on centralized cloud servers. This approach reduces latency, enhances speed, and minimizes bandwidth usage. In relation to cloud computing, edge computing complements it by enabling real-time data processing and analytics at the network's edge, allowing for quicker decision-making. This synergy is particularly beneficial for IoT applications, where immediate data processing is crucial, ensuring seamless integration between local devices and cloud services for efficient operations and improved user experiences. 14. Explain the concept of containerization and its benefits in cloud environments. Containerization is a lightweight virtualization method that allows applications and their dependencies to be packaged into containers. These containers are isolated environments that can run consistently across different computing environments. The benefits of containerization in cloud environments include improved scalability, as containers can be easily replicated and distributed across various nodes. It enhances resource utilization by allowing multiple containers to run on the same host. Additionally, containerization simplifies application deployment and management, enabling faster development cycles and easier updates or rollbacks. This approach promotes greater agility and efficiency in cloud services. 15. How do you handle cloud resource limits? Handling cloud resource limits involves proactive monitoring, resource optimization, and effective scaling strategies. First, it's essential to set up alerts to notify when approaching limits. Utilizing auto-scaling features can dynamically adjust resources based on demand, ensuring performance without manual intervention. Efficient resource allocation and right-sizing instances based on usage patterns also help prevent hitting limits. Additionally, employing tagging and organization strategies can track resource utilization, enabling better management and forecasting future needs. Regular audits of resource consumption can identify underutilized resources, allowing for their decommissioning or resizing. 
16. What strategies do you use for cost optimization in the cloud? Cost optimization in the cloud involves several strategies. First, it's essential to monitor usage patterns and identify underutilized resources. Right-sizing instances based on actual demand can significantly reduce costs. Leveraging reserved instances or savings plans can provide substantial savings for predictable workloads. Implementing auto-scaling helps adjust resources based on traffic, ensuring you only pay for what you need. Utilizing serverless architectures for certain applications eliminates the need for dedicated servers, further reducing costs. Regularly reviewing billing reports can also uncover unexpected charges, allowing for timely adjustments. 17. Describe your experience with cloud monitoring and logging tools. In my experience, I have utilized various cloud monitoring and logging tools such as Amazon CloudWatch, Azure Monitor, and Google Stackdriver. These tools enable real-time tracking of application performance and infrastructure metrics. I have set up alerts for anomalies, allowing proactive issue resolution. Additionally, I have implemented centralized logging solutions using ELK Stack, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, to analyze log data and derive insights. This has greatly improved troubleshooting efficiency and enhanced application reliability by providing visibility into system operations and user behavior. 18. How do you approach troubleshooting network latency issues in the cloud? When troubleshooting network latency issues in the cloud, I start by establishing a baseline for normal latency levels. This involves monitoring network performance metrics using tools like AWS CloudWatch or Azure Monitor. I then identify the specific areas where latency occurs, whether it's due to server response time, network hops, or external factors like DNS resolution. Next, I analyze the network path using tools such as TracerOut or Ping to pinpoint bottlenecks. I assess configurations like load balancers or CDN settings and look for potential misconfigurations. Finally, I collaborate with network engineers and leverage cloud provider support to address any underlying infrastructure issues impacting performance. 19. What is your experience with infrastructure as code, IAC, and which tools have you used? My experience with infrastructure as code, IAC, includes using tools like Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, and Ansible. With Terraform, I've deployed resources across multiple cloud providers, managing configurations in a declarative manner. AWS CloudFormation was utilized for automating infrastructure provisioning on AWS, allowing for version control of templates. Ansible helped in configuration management and orchestration, enabling automated setups of environments. Using IAC principles has streamlined deployments, reduced human errors, and enhanced the ability to replicate environments efficiently. 20. How do you ensure data privacy and compliance in cloud environments? Ensuring data privacy and compliance in cloud environments involves implementing robust security measures and adhering to regulations. Start by encrypting sensitive data both at rest and in transit, using strong encryption protocols. Regularly conduct risk assessments and audits to identify vulnerabilities. Establish access controls based on the principle of least privilege, ensuring only authorized personnel can access sensitive information. Stay updated on compliance requirements relevant to your industry, such as GDPR or HIPAA and implement policies for data governance and retention. Regular training for employees on data privacy best practices is essential. 21. Explain the concept of multi-cloud strategy and its advantages. A multi-cloud strategy refers to the use of multiple cloud computing services from various providers to meet an organization's needs. This approach allows businesses to avoid vendor lock-in, enhance flexibility, and optimize performance by selecting the best services for specific tasks. It enables better risk management. If one provider experiences downtime, the others can maintain operations. Additionally, a multi-cloud strategy facilitates compliance with regional data regulations and empowers organizations to leverage specific features from different platforms, enhancing innovation and efficiency. 22. What version control systems have you used in previous roles? In my previous roles, I have utilized several version control systems, including Git, Subversion, SVN, and Mercurial. Git is my preferred choice due to its distributed nature allowing multiple team members to work on code simultaneously without conflicts. I frequently use platforms like GitHub and GitLab for repository hosting, facilitating collaboration through pull requests and code reviews. SVN was useful for projects requiring centralized control, while Mercurial offered a simpler interface for distributed versioning. Each system has its strengths, and I adapt my approach based on project requirements. 23. How do you keep up with the latest trends and practices in cloud computing? Staying current with trends in cloud computing involves a multifaceted approach. I regularly read industry blogs, follow influential figures on social media, and subscribe to newsletters from reputable organizations. Participating in webinars and attending conferences also expands my knowledge base and allows for networking with peers. Online courses and certifications help deepen my understanding of emerging technologies.
Engaging in community forums and discussion groups provides insights into real-world applications and challenges, enhancing my practical skills in this rapidly evolving field. 24. Describe your experience with DevOps practices in cloud environments. In cloud environments, I've actively engaged in implementing DevOps practices that enhance collaboration between development and operations teams. By utilizing CI, CD pipelines, I streamlined deployment processes, allowing for faster delivery of features and improvements. I employed tools like Jenkins and GitLab C for automation, ensuring consistent testing and integration. Infrastructure as Code, IAC, was pivotal. Using Terraform, I managed cloud resources efficiently. Additionally, I fostered a culture of monitoring and feedback, leveraging tools such as Prometheus and Grafana for real-time insights, which significantly improved system reliability and performance. 25. How would you design a highly scalable and fault-tolerant application in the cloud? To design a highly scalable and fault-tolerant application in the cloud, start by utilizing microservices architecture, which enables independent scaling of components. Use load balancers to distribute traffic evenly across instances, ensuring no single point of failure. Implement auto-scaling groups to adjust resources based on demand dynamically. Incorporate redundancy by deploying instances across multiple availability zones. Use managed databases with replication and backup features to ensure data durability. Finally, monitor application performance and health using cloud-native monitoring tools for quick responses to any issues. As you prepare for your cloud engineer interview journey, these top 25 questions and answers will equip you with the knowledge and confidence needed to excel. Understanding both the technical aspects and best practices in cloud engineering will set you apart from other candidates. Remember to stay updated with industry trends and continuously hone your skills. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more valuable content. Your support makes a difference, and we appreciate it.